Hey, welcome back to the channel, everyone. And in this week's video, we're going to take a look at Cisco WebEx, which is the big new topic in uh, the new version of SEAL Core, which is the core exam for your CCMP in collaboration. What Cisco's done with the new SEAL Core exam is they have removed the Cisco Instant Messaging and Presence server and in its place, Cisco WebEx. Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace, and in this video, I wanna give you a compilation of three different videos that we have in our new SEAL Core version 1.1 video training series. And we're gonna begin with an overview of Cisco WebEx, see what its three core features are, then we'll take a look at the one interface through which we're gonna do almost all of our administration on Cisco WebEx. No longer do we have to install a local Cisco Unified Communications Manager server. No, now we can go to this web-based WebEx control hub. We'll check that out. And then finally, we'll take a look at a few different calling options. For example, let's say that we're doing an upgrade to Cisco WebEx, but we still have some local gateways at our site. We still have our Cisco iOS router, and it's connecting out to the PSTN. Can we still use that with WebEx? Well, maybe is the answer to that. And we'll take a look at some of those options. And these three videos that I've compiled for you in this video, they're taken from my brand new SEAL Core version 1.1 video training series, which along with a lot of other courses is available on Udemy. You can check out our Udemy courses by going to kwtrain.com slash Udemy. Now, let me introduce you to the biggest topic change in the SEAL Core curriculum, Cisco WebEx. Cisco WebEx really is a unified communications solution because it unifies different modes of communication. For example, we can use WebEx to place calls. We could use a phone or an app. We can also use Cisco WebEx for instant messaging or group messaging, and we can have meetings, webinars, or events, or maybe have some people join us in our personal meeting room using WebEx. And one of the interesting features of WebEx is that we administer it via a web-based portal. Specifically, we're going to go to admin.webex.com and we're going to log in with our WebEx administrator account to get a screen like you see here. And it's from this screen where we can configure just about everything WebEx related, where we can do things like adding users and groups and different types of devices and setting up our route plan. Now let's talk about each one of those communications modes we mentioned earlier, beginning with WebEx calling. And the calling features that WebEx offers us are very robust. In fact, we could use WebEx to replace the traditional functions of a PBX. And while there are physical phones like the one you see on screen that could be used to place WebEx calls, there are other options as well. We've got different meeting systems for large conference rooms. We've got applications. And when we want to call out to the PSTN, if we already have a local gateway that gets us out to the PSTN, we can configure Cisco WebEx to use that existing PSTN connection or connections, or we might have a cloud-based service. We might have, for example, a cloud-connected PSTN, a CCP service, which allows us to connect into the cloud, which then gets us out to the PSTN. And in addition to calling, another big use of Cisco WebEx we mentioned was messaging. We can direct message our colleagues or even somebody not within our organization. We can set up a WebEx space to have a group chat. And even though you can do this through a web portal, if you download and install the application, you get some extra features, such as some interesting animated GIFs and emoji. And what I think is a super valuable feature of messaging is we can share files with our colleagues. And in addition to calling and messaging, Cisco WebEx also shines when it comes to having meetings. And there are three basic meeting types. Each user can have their own WebEx personal room. So if I wanted to uh, get my team together for a call, I could uh, say, go to this link and we would all be in my WebEx personal room. Or I could use WebEx to conduct a webinar. I could invite people to a webinar. I could interact with the participants through features like a polling and a Q&A. And WebEx will scale to thousands of participants or we could even use WebEx meetings to have a full-blown event like a conference. This could be an on-site conference or an online conference or a hybrid of those physical and virtual conferences where we could have people sign up for a ticket, maybe at different pricing levels. This system could help us print out badges on site and handle pretty much all of the registration and payment requirements for a full-blown event. And that's a look at Cisco WebEx, a unified communications solution that has lots and lots of features, but they primarily fall under the categories of calling, messaging, and meetings.
When we administer a Cisco WebEx environment, just about all of our configuration is going to be done from this web-based portal. It's called the WebEx Control Hub, and you can access it by going to admin.webex.com and logging in with your WebEx account's administrator credentials. And in this video, we want to just get an overview by taking a brief tour of the WebEx Control Hub. After we first log into WebEx Control Hub, we find ourselves on this overview page. This gives us some wizard-like walkthroughs of doing some basic tasks, such as starting to use WebEx. It gives us a brief tutorial. It tells us a bit about how to configure calling services and how to add devices to our WebEx environment. There's a place for alerts. We could go into analytics if we want to get some statistical insight as to what's going on in our WebEx environment. For example, we could click on messaging and we could see that we don't have a lot of activity in this particular WebEx environment that I'm just using for training. We could go into troubleshooting and maybe check out the status of different services, see if they're all green. We could generate different reports. And something we're going to be doing in an upcoming video is going under the users option and we'll see how to add a user. Here I've already got a user added called Max Wallace. And there are a variety of things we can see about this user and configure for this user. For example, if we scroll down, we'll see what licensing Max has. Max is able to do basic messaging, access basic space meetings, and have one-on-one -on -one calls through WebEx that are non-PSTN calls. Currently, Max is not an administrator. We could change that by making this little menu pop out. And I could set Max as a support admin, uh, the organization admin, a location admin, and so on. And if we have a group of users that need a similar set of configurations, instead of configuring those users one at a time, what we might do instead is create a group, and then we could assign those settings to the entire group, which get inherited by all the members of that group. And in a large organization, we might have offices located around the world, and we can identify our office locations by going into the locations area. Here we see site one is set up for Cisco's headquarters, and we could drill into that. And we could, from here, assign admins for this particular location. We could add notes about this location, define different floors in a building, perhaps. We can also define workspaces. Where is work going to be done? For example, we might have a workspace that is a conference room. And maybe that conference room has a couple of WebEx video devices. Well, they could both be placed in this workspace. And speaking of devices, we could go under the Devices option if we wanted to add a device or change the settings of an existing device. We could also set up some global organizational settings. And down under services, we can configure those individual services, such as messaging, for example. Maybe for security reasons, we don't want our employees sharing files with external users. We could restrict external file sharing. We could set up meeting settings, calling settings. For example, here we see that we have Max assigned to an extension of 1100. We could also talk out to a local PSTN through a local gateway. We could set up call routing and define a route plan for a particular trunk getting us out to the PSTN. And there are lots and lots of features that WebEx supports. For example, we could set up an auto attendant, call queuing a hunt group, call parking, and it just goes on and on and on. In many cases, we can actually replace a company's PBX by simply using this web-based WebEx solution. And when we configure just about anything in this WebEx environment, we're going to do it from the WebEx Control Hub. In this video, we want to consider a couple of different call types that we have with WebEx. One is called local gateway calling. Maybe a company already has a gateway that gets them out to the PSTN. Maybe they've got a digital circuit like a T1 or an E1. It would be great if they could use that local gateway to make local calls out to the PSTN. And we'll take a look at that. Another option is hybrid calling for WebEx devices. Here, a device can dual register with WebEx out on the cloud and a local communications manager server. Let's take a look at each one. First, we've got a headquarters building and we've got a PSTN gateway that gets us out to the local PSTN. And we've got our phone. It's a WebEx device, and it wants to call out to the PSTN. But based on the number it's calling, it would be most efficient if we used that local gateway and not a gateway that WebEx calling would get us to out in the cloud somewhere. And we can make that happen with local gateway calling. Let's say that this WebEx device is registered with WebEx, 
It goes out to the WebEx cloud who says, oh, based on your location and the number you're calling, it would be most efficient if we used your local PST and gateway and uh, WebEx can redirect the call back to that headquarters site through the PST and gateway and out to the PSTN to make that local call. Another option is called hybrid calling for WebEx devices. Here we've got a couple of WebEx devices in our building and there's another WebEx device perhaps out on the internet somewhere. And notice that we do have WebEx calling in the cloud and we've got a local communications manager. Well, with hybrid calling, we can have our devices dual register. They can register both with WebEx out in the cloud. And in addition to that, they can register with the local communications manager server. We've now done dual registration, and based on the number that's being called, the RTP stream can be set up within the company, or it could be set up through the internet. It all depends on who we're calling. Let's say that one WebEx device on-site wants to call that other WebEx device on-site. Well, the RTP stream could be set up directly between those two local WebEx devices. But if we wanted to call out to the WebEx device on the internet, then that RTP stream could go directly out to the internet to that WebEx device. Because we have dual registered, WebEx calling in the cloud could make that decision and direct us how to get to that external WebEx device. And that's a look at a couple of different types of WebEx calling, local gateway calling, and hybrid calling. <music>